Malaysia could face an outflow risk of about 4 billion USD by passive funds and an additional 2 to 4 billion USD by active funds should FTSE Russell drop Malaysian bonds from the World Government Bond Index. According to Maybank Kim Eng analysts Winston Poon and Sito Manyi, this means a total outflow risk of 6 to 8 billion USD or about 24 to 33 billion ringgit by its estimates. They add that the final decision on whether to include or exclude Malaysia from the list may come following the annual review in September 2019. If Malaysia is dropped, they say, foreign selling will likely concentrate in Malaysia government securities. SDW GBI index excludes government investment issue, although the GII curve will inevitably be affected if foreign sell-offs weigh on the MGS curve. The analysts also note that the risk of Malaysian bonds being excluded from the WGBI seems more likely than not, unless fundamental changes are made to improve Malaysia's market accessibility level. Having said that, they say the index provider has indicated that they will continue to engage with local regulators and market participants to assess the potential changes. Hence, there could still be room for manoeuvre. Fears that Malaysian bonds would be dropped from the WGBI index weigh on the local composite index today, pushing the FBM KLCI to an over two-year low. Malaysian shares tumbled by 8.56 points or about 0.53% to close at 1,620.9, the lowest since December 27, 2016. The Naga Nacional and Maybank were the largest decliners on the bourse. The utility giant lost 2% or 24 cent to close at 12 ringgit and 6 cent. Maybank slipped 2.3% or 21 cent to 9 ringgit. The country's largest lender by assets also saw its share price pummel on news that Singapore's PUB would take over High Flux's Tuas Spring desalination plant, which the bank had financed. Overall, the bloodbath was widespread as 661 counters fell across Bursa, Malaysia, compared to only 208 that recorded gains today. Some 3.1 billion shares worth 1.85 billion ringgit change hands. Year to date, the KLCI is down 4.1%. Meanwhile, the ringgit also felt the selling pressure, extending its decline against the US dollar to 4.1345. This comes a day after Bloomberg declared Malaysia the worst major market in the world so far this year. Shares in Iskanda Waterfront City and Ecovest also continued to decline today as investors took profit after last week's surge on positive construction news flow. Hong Leong Investment Bank dealer representative Franklin says the earlier rally of these stocks, which followed other construction-related counters, had been sentiment-driven based on the revival of the East Coast Rail Link project. He believes PM Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad's subsequent announcement on the delay of the Kuala Lumpur-Singapore high-speed rail by one to two years poured additional cold water on the stocks. IW City was down 10.75% or 10 cent to 83 cent, while Ecovest slipped 4.35% or 2.5 cent to 55 cent. Both counters have a common major shareholder in property tycoon Tan Sri Lim Kang Hu. Last Tuesday, Mahadir had announced that the government was exploring proposals aimed at reducing the cost of the HSR project. However, at a real technology conference yesterday, he said that the HSR is not necessary at the moment. AirAsia Group CEO Tan Sri Tony Fernandez says more dividends are in store for shareholders. This is after the carrier received a nod at an EGM for its deal with US-based Castle Lake LP. Fernandez tweeted that the disposal monetizes AirAsia's aircraft at high prices and avoids residual risk. It also enables the group to return cash to shareholders and invest in its new digital business. He added that the MFRS 16 accounting standards impact on AirAsia's cash position at about 35 million ringgit a year is not very material. To recap, AirAsia is disposing of 25 aircraft to Castle Lake for 768 million USD. This will be done via the sale of its entire equity interest in Mera Aviation, held by the group's Lab 1 based aircraft leasing unit, Asia Aviation Capital. Castle Lake will also buy from Asia Aviation Capital a total of four new aircraft to be delivered this year. Under the deal, all 29 aircraft will be leased back to AirAsia. Hock Seng Lee has secured a 298.98 million ringgit job via open tender to construct the 1.9 km Batang Palo Bridge in Muka, Sarawak. This is a project under the state's coastal road construction scheme. In a bursa filing, the builder said it received the letter of acceptance from the Sarawak government yesterday. 
It said this project falls under Package 3, which is part of the 11 billion ringgit allocated for upgrading works for the coastal road, second trunk road and water supply works in Sarawa. The scope of works for HSL includes substantial marine piling works, earthworks, geotechnical, drainage, pavement works and the associated mechanical and electrical works. The contract period is 48 months and construction is expected to commence in May 2019. HSL expects the contract to contribute positively to the group's earnings and net assets. The transaction will not have any effect on its share capital and substantial shareholdings.